Okay, hello everyone, and today's video is about an interesting camera. So, this camera was released in 1949, so it was the year before 1950, and this was after the war. Um, the war started in 1939 and ended in 1945. Cameras at the time, before that period, were very compact. Um, they were wooden, they had what they were called the accordion lens. I'll show that in a second. And the accordion lens made the cameras of that day very compact, very portable. So it came like a box. You take the box, you put it on a stand, and you could take a family portrait. When the war ended, um, Kodak decided to make a little more of a camera that was a little more intermediate, a little something that um, people that love photography can take. They created a line called the Taurus. Uh, which had about five to six models in two different variants, which was the Kodak Taurus and the Kodak Taurus II. Um, after that, there was also the Kodak Brownie, which is a completely different line. I'm not going into that, but if you want, you can go online and Google it. So, the Kodak camera, this is, I bought this in a thrift store. So this was from a guy that is in my community. I don't know if he's living anymore. Um, he sold it to the thrift store. And it came in this very rare leather case that originally came with it. Usually you can buy one, but this is from the original owner. So it has a little metal ring on the bottom. Um, it's a little bit hard to get off. But, uh, there we go. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Okay. So this is the Kodak Taurus. This is the first variant of it. This weighs roughly about 3.4 pounds. Um, it is quite heavy. Um, so, this is a pretty big camera. I can show you, this is my camera. And this is a modern day camera. I mean, this is, you know, an 80s film camera compared to this. So you can kind of see that this one's kind of, and this one's a lot smaller. This one also, doesn't have that much stuff on it. I'll just show you in a second. So, how does this camera work? Well, you're gonna think, well, that's, no, there's, it's literally like what the 30s cameras were. The only difference between this camera was in the 30s, um, you should, there, I have a picture up over here. Um, 30s cameras, as you can see over here, they were very boxy. They were literally a box. And this is more of, you could actually hold it with your hand. You could put it in a case, put it around, you know, and it was a lot easier to um, carry with you. So, what is the accordion lens? So, I'm going to show you in just a second. So, an accordion lens is this. This is an accordion lens. These are, oh my god, they're beasts. They're beautiful. Um, this takes 120 film. If you were watching any of my other videos, 120 film is very expensive. It is expensive. Um, 35 millimeter is the more common film you're gonna buy, but this takes 120 film, so the picture can come out comes out larger. Uh, this does take color. It's not really gonna take color well, but you can take color photos with this. It is a black and white camera, but you can take color photos with this. So the way this works is, um, it's a little hard to show you in the camera is. This is a complete, I mean, this is beyond the words of manual. This is the most manual camera you can possibly put your hands on if you're not used to uh, film cameras or know about cameras. If you do, you probably know what I'm talking about. This camera is what they used to call the measuring camera. So measuring cameras are very, same thing like the 30s cameras. You put this on a tripod and you'd adjust the um, distance, let's say a person is 10 feet away, you adjust the 10 50, 50, uh, feet away, sorry. Um, and then you'd also adjust the shutter speed, matching, um, you know, the picture, what the light is on site, and then to snap a picture, to cock this, sorry, being implicit, um, you would take this knob right over here, it's very hard to see, but this knob right here. You see what I just did? I just pushed it in, now I can't move it. It's not right over here. And that basically is cocked it because this is a manual camera. So what happens is to take a picture two different ways. One way, it's right over here. You pull that thing right, this little piece. See, right over there. And that's one way. Another way is 
pull this piece back. Very convenient. Um, you pull this little knobby thing right over here. It looks kind of like a button. You pull it down and it takes the picture. This camera is surprisingly very hard to find, a uh, very hard to find a working one because the accordion, because this is an accordion, if it gets one hole, I kid you not, just a tiny little nothing hole, this thing is completely unworkable. You would have to find a replacement for this and it's kaput. So this has no holes, that's good. This is working, that's good. Um, this is a clean camera, kind of. Uh, so this is a good camera. Um, another cool thing this also had at the time, a bulb flash, which is common in those days. It also had where you can get one on the handle, which was also very nice. Um, and they don't make this anymore. Uh, I tried and it just doesn't exist. So as you can see right over here, there's a little, uh, looks like a little, that, well, there used to be a cord that connects to this end, and it makes a charge, kind of, you know. And then you'd plug, and the bulb, when you take the picture, would poof, you know, kind of thing, and then you'd have the picture taken. Um, that's how this thing works. Um, also, you can see over here, I don't know if you can see, it says Kodak Tourist. Now, I like the design they used to do in those days. And... Um, to close this, there's little two uh, flaps on the sides, as you can see over here. It has a little for your fingers. You pull them down, you can see. And all you have to do is just pull it back up, and it clicks in like that. I don't know what this is. I am still trying to figure this out. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, in the back, cool thing, it has a little uh, red ring. That's to show you how many pictures you've taken. So you just pull this up, as you can see and it would show you inside the camera and it should show you a number. Over here it's a little dialog to show you uh, what, you know, what the aperture should be, what the footage should be, but you know, you don't really need that. Cool thing about this, the entire back comes off if I pull off both sides. And this whole thing comes off. So it can swing back and forth from either side and it also can come off completely. This is what the inside of the camera looks like. Um, you'd have to put the film in right over here. You'd have to pull it. It's a little, it's kind of the opposite of how this camera works. It's just everything's on the other side. So, you know, you have to cock it on this side. It's on that side. I mean, not cocking is over here, but expose it again. Um, you'd have to do from over here. So everything's opposite. Kind of typical. I mean, this camera is almost 60, 60 something years old. So... So, you can see also how when you look inside, look how that tripod kind of thing looking inside. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so you can imagine how this thing would look like. Let's put this on a tripod, you get, you know, some film in there. Pretty sick. Pretty, pretty sick. And um, I don't know if I can show you on how the aperture changes. If you can see. No, you can't see it, but this thing is a beast of a camera. So let's go into a little history, shall we? While I'm putting this camera away. Um, if some of you know, during the war, um, cameras were used for um, photography for newspapers. And at the time, the Germans had their own uh, companies, German companies which are known today as very expensive cameras. They can really uh, run you into a little bit of a pickle. So that's, you know, film cameras of, of, those, of those days. So, sorry. Um, so basically, film cameras have made a very big leap from where they were in the early 1900s. Originally, cameras in the 1900s used different types of film. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, until a certain point, people were using their own types of film. They were making their own types of film. So you really couldn't get the same picture you want from different people. Everybody used something else. They all used different processes. Um, and then towards ready the, ready to the 1910, uh, 1910 and towards the 1920s, there started to be a real manufacturing... I'm sorry. For companies that started making, you know, cameras that had type of films for them. 
and they did very well. Um, oh, through the 30s, a lot of people had cameras. They were boxy. They were a little bit expensive at the time because it was the Great Depression, but they used them for helping the government rebuild. For at the time, uh, we had the Great Depression, so they used to take pictures. Grand Canyon, um, not Grand Canyon, sorry, the Hoover Dam, I'm sorry, the Hoover Dam, and a lot of other projects that were taking place. There are tons of pictures because of how the, com the cameras were developing at the time. Already towards the 50s, things were taking a huge leap. Cars were getting so much better, technology was getting so much better, and people were going crazy. Uh, towards the end of the 40s already, cameras were becoming a lot more affordable. A lot of people were buying them. I mean, it was becoming a thing. Cameras were the thing. And um, so Kodak was one of the ones that, you know, were the ones that started a whole line of cameras. A lot of people bought these. Um, until already the 60s, they started making, like that camera had the Minolta SRT 101. <coughs> I'm sorry, um, those cameras were manual, but they were very easy to use. You just have to switch the um, how much of a second and take the picture and put in the right 35 millimeter film and it, it changed the way we use film cameras today. I mean, film cameras are not really used anymore, but we use digital cameras. The process of digital is somewhat, you know, getting a little bit out of date already, but SLR cameras are, are really showing their strong suits so you really can see how cameras have really made a drastic change. They've made photography a lot better, and they've made things a lot better for us. So this is one example of a camera that shows what technology was at the time. This, this was the camera of its day. There were many other cameras besides this one. Um, but, you know, this really has good history on it. The interesting thing about Kodak is um, Kodak, I don't know if anybody really knows film people or photo people know. Sorry, I did not sleep enough last night. I'm sorry. Um, they are kind of gone bankrupt quite a few times. They're really not doing very well. But it's really showing us that um, film is making a comeback. I am a huge film lover. I grew up with the clunky digital cameras and I hated them. So I... First thing I did when I was ready for college, I got a film camera. I've been running, and I just just went to B and H. I'm like, just give me any film camera you got. I'm gonna buy it. And you know, the guy told me that was perfect for me, so I got a film camera. Film cameras may be a lot harder for you people, but come on, I I'm serious. How lazy can a person be? You know, I know it's easy to just take a photo and just post it on Instagram and take a selfie of you and your lesbian girlfriend or your husband or something or your boyfriend I don't know what you do that's your business but you know sometimes film cameras you know you can make a beautiful album and the nice thing about film cameras is today I don't know if people know this most places give you a DVD so you just put it into your you know computer and you got you make yourself a photo album online with your film camera film pictures on a computer that's pretty cool that is really pretty cool um, so yeah, film cameras have really made a real come. I don't know if you know this, Star Wars Force Awakens was actually made on old film. So a movie that everybody loved, I didn't really like it, but everybody that loved, that movie was made on um, f uh, old film. And people didn't realize until they realized, wow, that was really great. And a lot of people are going to Super 8. I mean, Kodak is now making a camera, I mean, it's not a camera, a video camera that has a digital screen and uses Super 8 film that is pretty cool and you can use it to transfer it to your computer. I mean, that that's that's cool. That's really, really cool. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the future has in store for these cameras. Um, Kodak really has shown, they're an American company. I live in New York. I live in Rockland County. Kodak, where their company was, is not far from where I live. Um, Kodak has really changed cameras in America for people really don't know. They really have changed cameras here for years. Um, even before Japanese, Japanese companies came here, people were using the American companies and one of them were Kodak and Kodak really changed the way that we use films. I mean, their Kodak Brownie system, which is incredible how they were able to make such amazing cameras, such a small package at that time. I mean, cameras at the time were huge, and they were able to make this tiny little box, and people were going crazy. It was Kodak that really changed the way we use um, photography in the United States. 
Um, and then when the Japanese company, they really changed our industry. So film cameras have really made a giant leap. I mean, the Civil War was one of the first wars to have pictures taken. I mean, film cameras have really made a huge jump in history. I mean, they were the camera for the past 125 years. Um, and, you know, people don't realize what they are missing in film cameras. Um, I have a video if you want, I'll post a link below where you can go check out my channel um, about the uh, film cameras. So, guys, um, always remember, keep on smiling and for heaven's sakes, Go get yourself a film camera! Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Really appreciate it. I um, hope you give a thumbs up. Um, I have videos every single Sunday. My name is Mr. Smiles. And this is my YouTube channel. So this is one of my first videos on how to use film cameras. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, if you do, please leave comments. I really want to know um, how you like these videos. So remember guys, keep on smiling.